time for another new title, and indeed it's a new game fresh into early access. It certainly has a familiar feel to it, but more on that later. Welcome to Beyond the Wire. As you can see from the footage, Beyond the Wire is a FPS game set in the slightly unusual world of the World War I timeframe, but it's also published by Offworld Industries, who have Squad and Postscriptum in their stable. So in this relatively sparsely explored timeframe and setting, let's ask, Beyond the Wire, is it worth playing? And just before we get into the video, in my normal full disclosure way, I want to say that the makers of the game gave me access via Steam for the purposes of making videos just like this one. I said in starting that this title feels familiar in a way, that way being that if you've played any of the recent titles that I looked at, like Squad or Postscriptum, Insurgency Standstorm or Hell Let Loose, then this title fits right into that hardcore milsim tactical FPS mold. As this is a first release at an early access title from Scuderia Offworld Industries, this game does feel extremely close to those other existing titles. So close in fact that I'm guessing there's a certain amount of asset reuse to get beyond the wire into a workable playable state. The main menu interface is laid out in a similar way. The team and spawning organization feels like they're closely related under the hood. Perhaps the most obvious though is that the soldier medical bandage, the actual first person animation, looks almost identical to the one present in Squad. This may sound like a criticism, but I can understand that it's the reality of making a game that if you have assets to fill spaces or you'd like to create custom work in the future, then you can get the game off and running a lot earlier than waiting for that custom work to be completed. Again, this is the first release of an early access title. So let's actually talk about how this does feel different to, say, Postscriptum and Squad. The visuals of the World War I setting can be similar to other games, yet the reliance on more outdated and superseded techniques and focus on things like trench warfare does tend to lead to the experience in Beyond the Wire. There's a simplicity about the nature of the battles in Beyond the Wire that I found to be almost refreshing. After that 360 degree battle of squad with helicopters and large expansive maps, the more linear nature of this World War I title looks like it has a character of its own. Again, using words like linear these days might lead you to think that this is being construed as criticism, but I don't mean it that way at all. It isn't just that this game is in early access and this is the first major content release, there have actually been a number of hotfixes already too. But also it's the nature of the period that means that the design seems to want to try and create confrontations that ape that history. Some of the maps feel narrower than something you may expect from Postscriptum, where there might be a whole town laid out before you. In Beyond the Wire, there's less room to move around the battle. It's like the devs want the formation of a more hard front between the two opposing sides. And just a quick aside to say, if you are enjoying this video, please do tap the thumb up button. It helps me out with YouTube and discoverability and all stuff like that. If you tap that subscribe button right now as well, then that is really appreciated too. Thank you. The setting also dictates the weaponry available too, of course. Most of the weapons here are bolt-action rifles with a much lower firing rates than you may be used to in other, more comparatively modern eras. Something semi-auto or even early light machine guns are much scarier to face when you're holding a weapon that might take two seconds to reload between shots. It means that the time to kill, or really, I guess, time of engagement can feel longer too. If you and your foe both miss, then there's a sort of lull in the fighting as you both reload and try to do better the next time. It meant that the initial flick shot accuracy is of even more value than it normally is. Most engagements weren't just a hose of bullets. If someone reacted with more accuracy than you did, then okay, you know how much skill they just managed to deploy quickly. As someone a bit older, who was never overly blessed in the aiming department, I thought that I might find that focus on single moments of high skill aiming to be more frustrating, but in actual fact, I enjoyed the different cadence that it gave fights. The lack of easy available suppression also helped give the fights more feeling of space somehow compared to other titles in the genre. I'd really like to know the developers' feelings on this as well. As far as I know, there isn't a roadmap currently. As we've seen, other, more mainstream World War I titles like Battlefield 1 have quite a lot of semi-automatic and fully automatic weapons for something set in that time period. I'd imagine the team at Redstone Interactive, the developers of Beyond the Wire, will want something pretty historically accurate. However, that does ask questions about how to balance if one side just has more effective weaponry. The graphics feel pretty close to Postscriptum's older maps in quality, that is okay with a slightly raw feel to them, 
but nothing like the more refined cinematic tone of Hell Let Loose. The style of the areas is well done though, these don't just feel like generic forests or landscapes, they feel like areas scarred from months or even years of battle. Dense woodland also contrasts with muddy, almost alien looking landscapes where trees used to be growing, but then that whole thing has just become churned up into a quagmire. The more recent maps from both Postscriptum and Squad have raised the quality bar, and there's a feeling in Beyond the Wired that perhaps they don't want to put that level of polish into what is an actively developed game at the moment. Some of the textures and details look like they could do with some improvement, and I'd hope to see that continue to improve over the development of this game. I did like the changes that were made to the overview map though. There's a woven texture to it, like it's been printed on cloth, which feels very imperial for World War I. An unnecessary but lovely detail to see that I hope speaks for the developer's vision of how they want every facet of this game to look as accurate as possible. If you're wondering, yes, Beyond the Wire does feature some of the terrific audio design that makes its sibling titles so well loved. The wide dynamic range of sound is here again. The quiet moments of footfall or grass is overwhelmed by rifle fire and explosions exactly the way you would want it to be. There is drama and impact from loud things happening, which of course makes the quiet moments feel all the more tension filled. Communicating with teammates can become almost impossible during artillery as it demands the attention of anyone nearby. This disorientation isn't an annoyance though, it's something that you learn to enjoy as it pulls you into the experience like other games can only dream of. Like Postscriptum and Squad, I'd recommend some good quality hi-fi headphones to experience the game at its best. A small complaint on the audio side before we move on, it's a bit of a niche thing. You can't currently pick the audio input for your in-game mic like you can in Squad. It means people with slightly odd audio setups like me can't use their mics in-game. It's not a big deal for most people. It's the kind of thing that I would hope would be added later in early access. As player numbers go, it peaked around 3k concurrence, and most days sees a peak of around 500 players online at the same time. Anecdotally, I've never really had a problem finding full servers, and these are 100 man 50 versus 50 spots as well. There's always a couple of busy clan servers. I'd say that was okay for a fairly low key launch. If we compare it to something like Verdun, also a hardcore World War I game that's been around since 2015, saw an all time peak of around 4,500, and daily peaks of around 300 concurrent players at the moment, and it's cheaper as well. So, is it worth playing? For the gameplay we have at the moment, there's a lot to like about Beyond the Wire. There's a feeling of World War I really influencing the style of the gameplay. It feels more bare bones compared to other titles that have been on the early access path for longer. Clearly this is the first open release, but the different path that it has from those other games in the tactical FPS genre is nice to see, even at this early stage. The people I found playing the game seem to have experience of those other titles in the genre, often already having experience in squad leading, which helps enormously, not just in terms of being effective and winning the game, but much more importantly, in terms of player enjoyment. Like Hell Let Loose and other similar in-style titles, the enjoyment of this is often directly proportional to the quality of your teammates. As I phrased it before, the experience lives and dies on teamwork and coordination. If you don't have any, it can be a quite frustrating time. I was happy to see so many people with skills from other games also try out a game set in World War I. If I'm honest, this isn't a time period that I know as much about. I didn't think it was, for want of a better word, as popular as titles set in World War II. I should talk about price here as well. The launch price is £27.79 in the UK, so putting it at a whisker under $35 in the US. The game has three maps currently and a number of factions and weapons, but this clearly isn't the end state for this game. This is a first release, so the current price does feel a bit on the high side. I know that tactical FPSs set in World War I are a fairly niche thing, but if you look at Steam's top sellers, things like, say, Hades, now a full release, are almost a third less, and even existing more developed titles from off-world industries like Postscriptum are in fact cheaper. I've said before that you should buy titles for what they give you now rather than on promises of what's to come. Or, if you are feeling speculative, then realize that it is just that. You're essentially betting that this will come good, like a Kickstarter or other crowdfunded project. 
I'm hoping that Beyond the Wire will grow into a game that feels cheap at this price, but I would like to have seen a discount at launch so that more people might have felt inclined to feeling more speculative about joining the game on its path along the early access road. I hope with updates and releases that this game blooms and shows its full potential. What we have now is a very enjoyable starting step, and I'm definitely keeping my eye on Beyond the Wire as it progresses. What do you think of Beyond the Wire? Are you a squad player looking for perhaps something new? Perhaps you played Verdun before and now are looking for a new title? Let me know all your powerful thoughts and feelings by leaving a comment below right now. Like always, I'll be reading every single one of them. If you did enjoy this video, please do tap the subscribe button along with the thumb up. And if you choose to share this video on Reddit or Facebook or Twitter or wherever, an extra special thank you. It really does help me out massively. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. Right around the corner, man. On the right. Sunny data.